I want to talk to you today about my experience with the very continual glucose monitor. So hopefully you've heard about what a CGM is. It is a continual glucose monitor, just like it sounds like it monitors your blood glucose in real time constantly. So this is what it looks like. I'm at the very end of my two weeks of using this sensor. So you can see it's starting to pull away um, from my skin in terms of the sticky uh, kinesio tape like portion that covers the actual sensor. But this is what it looks like. And I promise it is not scary. The application of the monitor is really easy. They give you all the instructions and in the app, they also have a lot of FAQ integrated into the process. So if you are, this is actually a really great part of the process because when you get your very kit and you're staring at it and you're saying, okay, I have to stick this in my arm, lots of different questions are going to come up. So one thing that I loved about the process is that as I was on my phone scrolling through the uh, the app and the process, uh, the instructions for actually putting on the monitor, um, there were these little drop downs where I was able to select like, oh, I'm worried about this part or, oh, I have a question about this part. And then I would click on that article and it would actually take me to more information so that I could get clarity in real time about anything that I was concerned about. So that's really, really cool about the app, which I will show you in a second. Um, but the monitor that comes with Very is what's called a Freestyle Libre monitor. Um, it's by Abbott uh, Lab Company, and most all CGM companies are going to use the same type of monitor. It is just very standard and very, uh, very stable uh, in terms of it, it provides really good data consistently. So a lot of companies are going to use the same sensor. So when you're thinking about using a CGM, uh, you know, one of the biggest decision points is like, do I either get it prescribed or do I work with a private company, get it sent to me and then have the app all integrated. So there's a couple of differences between the process. So if you go to your doctor and you ask for a continual glucose monitor um, and you want to have one prescribed to you, uh, usually you have to go through some insurance hoops in order to get that prescribed. And that works. It sometimes works. Sometimes uh, you actually aren't able to get one. Really depends on your doctor and how they code the request in terms of getting it insurance covered. Um, but that is why these companies like Very Stable exist so that anybody, regardless of your uh, essentially glucose status, whether or not you are diabetic, pre-diabetic, any shade of having a blood sugar problem, you can get a CGM through them and uh, essentially pay a membership fee depending on how their pricing is structured and get a CGM delivered to your door. So um, I personally uh, work with a company called Very Stable uh, and I really like the company in terms of what they stand for. They're all about education and really making sure that people understand what's going on with their blood sugar and why metabolic health is such a big deal. And if you live in America and you see the state of the, the, the most uh, prevalent population uh, is actually overweight, obese, and is not healthy metabolically. So very, very much has a mission to educate people on why your blood glucose matters. Um, so I like that about the company. I also like that they are far and away the most affordable out of all of the other companies like NutriSense and Levels. So when you're picking a CGM company, look at what they offer, but uh, they're all going to have an app and a system that integrates with your sensor. Um, and the sensors are all the same. So 
uh, I pick to vary for all of those reasons. Um, I also, you know, it's it's really important to me that things are accessible for people because natural medicine does cost more than going to your traditional uh, doctor and going through, you know, a insurance based hospital system. It does tend to cost more um, to pursue natural medicine. Um, and so companies that know that and keep that on the forefront of their mind when they are creating their programs, um, I think is really beneficial because I want more people to have access to using a CGM. So um, I'll show you my app in a bit. But um, I am, let me kind of tell you why I'm doing this. I'm doing this not just because I am curious about my metabolic health. Um, I'm doing this because I am in my third trimester of my first pregnancy and, um, or my first baby, I should say. And um, I essentially need to prove to my midwives that I don't have gestational diabetes. So the standard of care in medicine is that all pregnant women, regardless of their risk, are going to get screened for gestational diabetes from weeks 24 to 28. So I knew that when I got to that point in my pregnancy, I was going to pick an alternative method in order to prove that I do not have gestational diabetes. And the reason why is because a lot of the conventional methods um, are not that great and there can be false positives um, and they actually include a lot of toxins. So um, the most common way to screen for gestational diabetes is to do what's called an oral glucose tolerance test, which involves drinking a lot of sugar in one sitting. Um, they call it the glucola drink. You can get different flavors. They all have really, really crappy ingredients. And you can find these ingredients if you Google a little bit, though, if you go to some place like drugs.com um, or another medical website, you won't necessarily find that data. Um, I don't know why they just, it's not published out there, but the uh, information that you can find regarding the ingredients in this drink is from people like me that have posted actual photos of the ingredient list from when they actually did the test. So you can find those um, on uh, things like Google, Google images, but there is a ton of sugar um, and it's usually in the wrong form. It's usually a fructose form of sugar and it has um, some preservatives in it and it has a lot of uh, food dyes and colorings um, and things that you really don't want to be drinking in general, especially not when you're pregnant because most everything that a pregnant woman does is going to affect baby because everything that I do gets into my blood and gets into baby's blood. So um, I was not comfortable drinking a drink like that, especially being so low risk. So a lot of women that need to be screened for gestational diabetes are actually very low risk. They have good glucose control and they eat a healthy diet and they, they have healthy exercise levels. Um, and so it's kind of pointless in my mind to make those women take a bolus dose of sugar and see what happens to them. Um, and uh, I just, yeah, I think that that's very interesting. I think it's very interesting that uh, the standardized drink is full of crap and is not just sh literally sugar water, which there would be nothing wrong with standardization if that were the case, um, because most processed sugar has a certain amount of grams of carbohydrates and sugars per each teaspoon. Um, so why they don't have a better method, I don't know. It's because medicine is often behind in these areas. So um, the there's a whole bunch of alternatives to doing a gestational diabetes test. Um, you don't have to do the orange glucola drink. Um, there is a new test out there called the Fresh Test, um, but they are a smaller company and it's harder for them to keep up with the demand of the amount of women that actually want to do that. Um, and the Fresh Test is a great alternative that um, some midwife practices are using now. Um, 
you, you've probably also heard about drinking juice or doing the jelly bean test. There's lots of different options of ways to get sugar into your system um, to increase it. I've heard of people doing mango juice, orange juice, um, but most doctors don't like that approach because the amount of carbohydrate is not standardized, um, which is kind of silly because you can read a label and see how much sugar is going to be in there. So uh, anyways, I knew that when I got to this point, I would want to do something that I would consider to be way more accurate and much more tailored to my risk level. Um, I am okay demonstrating that I don't have gestational diabetes, um, but I want to do it in a smart way. Um, with all of these tests, you can, of course, uh, not pick to do any of them, you can decline them all. Um, but I wanted to see what my metabolic health was like. And it's also a good learning opportunity uh, for me, but also it's good for my midwives to see this data also, so that they can maybe help their other female clients that are pregnant um, to, you know, use a continual glucose monitor for, for monitoring for them. Uh, as well, so that they can avoid the testing if that's what they desire. So um, I knew about very um, from some practitioner friends um, have been involved with the company a little bit um, and uh, decided to do it myself. And uh, it's essentially what what very has you do is you get two sensors. Each sensor lasts 14 days, so you essentially have 28 days or a month of data recording if you desire that. Um, I'm only going to do two weeks because I'm getting to the point in my pregnancy where snacking is much more a thing than meals because I'm losing space. <laughs> so I can't eat really big meals. Um, I'm doing a lot more snacks. So um, it has what I've noticed. Um, when, when we talk about the logging is I'm logging all these snacks. And so that's getting a little cumbersome, but, uh, I'm only going to do two weeks and then I'm going to, uh, keep my other sensor and come back to it and probably just do a check-in on myself postpartum after I have the baby, after my hormones have shifted, after baby and I are into more of a schedule, somewhere around like the two month or the three month mark postpartum. Um, but let's, that's my plan. Um, and uh, what I plan to do with the data is to sit down and show my midwives uh, you know, how my meals were scored, what I was logging, my activity level. So if you go into the app, um, you will get to a screen. Hopefully you guys can see this. You'll get to a screen that says today at the top, and then you start to log the data. So uh, the sensor or I should say the app will help you track all of the data that will affect how your blood sugar fluctuates throughout the day. So in the app, you are going to uh, log your meals and you can do this as basic or as in depth as you want to. And I'll show you what that looks like. You're also going to periodically do checks of your blood sugar. I'll show you how to do that. And then you're also going to log things like your activity and your sleep, because all of those things will affect what your glucose control is like throughout the day. So um, let's let's talk about let's talk about the start of the day. So if you can look and see, uh, I had sleep last night, yay. And then when I woke up, I took my blood sugar reading. So my blood sugar reading in the morning was 85 milligrams per deciliter. Uh, for all of you people that are watching this video, I'm talking in American values. If you are Canadian or you live in another country, your metrics are going to be different. So um, 85 milligrams per deciliter, that was what my blood sugar was like when I woke up in the morning. Um, 
that is a little bit higher than typical for me. Um, but what did I do last night? My husband and I went out to see a movie and we actually bought popcorn and we actually bought a thing of M&Ms. So I had some of that after I had dinner um, at about 7.30 at night. We had, we had some snacks for the movie. So that raised my blood sugar. And then my body lowered the blood sugar and stabilized it throughout the night. So if that type of thing happens, if I have some sort of dessert or higher carb thing the evening before, I expect my morning blood sugar to be a little bit higher. Um, so when you get up in the morning, you scan your blood sugar. The, easy, the easiest thing that you can do is scan your blood sugar. Um, and by scan your blood sugar, I mean scan the sensor. So you have this scan button and you click it. It says ready to scan. And all you do is go like that. And your phone does a little vibrate to tell you that it got it. And funny enough, I'm at 85 again still. So um, if you want to save that data, if you're curious, you can just swipe it away. Um, I'm always curious. So I put curious on the bottom and I log it. I hit done. It saves it. And um, it gets to, uh, if I go over to another screen, I get to see the trend of my blood sugar data throughout the day. You also get scores. So you get a, uh, what's called a daily score. So mine so far is 92. 100 is the top. Um, and then you also get meal scores. So about two hours after you eat, um, it asks you to scan for your blood sugar. Um, and then it will calculate out of one to 10 what your meal score is. So the higher the meal score, the more stabilized your blood sugar was after that meal. Okay. So uh, I have been doing, uh, for a while now, I really like to do things, uh, called breakfast bowls. Um, I've been doing this more so in pregnancy because it's a great way for me to get a lot of nutrition in, in the very small package. So I like to do Greek yogurt, which is usually full fat, um, and a scoop of collagen powder, sometimes a scoop of whey protein powder. Um, sometimes I leave that uh, off or on, depending on if I feel like I need extra protein. Um, I'll often put some nut butter in there, like peanut butter or sunflower seed butter. Uh, I'll often do a sprinkle of cocoa nibs. Maybe I'll do a couple of nuts. Maybe I'll do half a banana or half a cup of berries. Um, I'll do some cinnamon, a little sprinkle of salt. Um, Sometimes if I need some extra carbohydrates, I'll sprinkle some uh, oat bites that I get from Costco. Uh, they're called heavenly hunks for all of you people that are interested. Um, and then sometimes I'll put some like protein cereal on top or some regular gluten-free cereal for just a little bit of crunch. Um, but those are what my breakfast bowls are made up of. And they tend to be really balanced with having a really good dose of protein, a healthy dose of fat with a little bit of carb. And uh, that type of breakfast tends to set me up really, really well for the rest of the day. So, um, in about seven minutes, I'm going to have a score from what my breakfast bowl was, but I had my breakfast bowl for lunch because I actually did a really long hike after I woke up this morning. So that is another thing that you log with your app is you actually put in your activity. So you can see hiking there. So I was hiking from about for about two hours from 820 this morning to about 1030 uh, this morning, give or take. And so me and my friend met up, we took the dogs, we went to a great place um, in Boise in the foothills and had a lot of fun walking and hiking all around. So after my hike, I logged my blood sugar and I also had a snack. I had um, a couple of walnuts and a couple of chocolate chips. And so um, I put that in as a snack. I also came home to uh, a thing of, of green tea that my husband had got for me while he was at the coffee shop um, when I was hiking. And so I logged that I had some walnuts and chocolate chips and some green tea around 1045 in the morning after I had my hike. So hopefully you guys can understand how you're logging it. 
Um, when you log a meal, you can take a photo of it. You can change the name of the meal, especially if you repeat the same type of meal over and over. Um, the app will remember that, I believe. And then um, you can, I eat different things all the time, so I don't use that feature. Um, and then you can also put in ingredients. So like this is my breakfast bowl. You can see that there's a whole list of ingredients there. Um, so Greek yogurt, whey protein powder, collagen, banana, cinnamon, coconut, peanut butter. That was pretty much my, my mix this morning. So um, they ask for ingredients because they will tell you at the end of the week which ingredients tended to be helpful for your blood sugar and which didn't. So another thing that I like about this system is that it's all right there and um, it's really easy to use but you also don't have to be a metabolic whiz to really get something out of this process. Even if you have a very baseline level of knowledge about how to balance your blood sugar and how to eat properly for your blood sugar, um, or you are absolutely clueless, the app will help you because there is a lot of educational articles that are anywhere from two to four minutes of a read integrated that they'll ping at you and you can choose to um, uh, read them if you'd like. Um, but they give you scores for your snacks. They give you scores for your meals and they give you like a daily summary and a weekly summary. So especially if you are really doing a lot of diet experimentation, you're trying to really improve your metabolic health, you can use monitors for several months and test certain foods to see how they affect you. So for instance, um, one thing that I tend to harp on with my patients is um, just recognizing foods that are really high in the glycemic index. And foods that are high in the glycemic index, they tend to increase your blood sugar rapidly. And while we, I guess, sometimes need foods to do that, most people have too many blood sugar excursions. So their blood sugar is going from a normal baseline up to something really high. And then their body has to pump out insulin to deal with that blood sugar surge. And then their blood sugar drops off, which is normal, but it is very hard metabolically to achieve the sleep, the energy, the mood, and everything that you want, especially body composition, with your blood sugar going all up and down and topsy-turvy. Um, so ideally, we want to have small excursions of blood sugar where you just have a, you have a baseline and then you go slightly up after a meal and then you come right back down to baseline. We don't have to want to have these large excursions. And um, something that is very high glycemic that a lot of Americans eat every single day is orange juice. Orange juice is essentially just pure sugar. It's essentially just per sugar. Yes, it comes from oranges. Yes, it's got some pulp in it. Yes, you know, it's natural, but it is very high in fructose and it is very high in sugar. It's fruit juice. It's high in sugar. So uh, if you drink juice, your blood sugar is going to go up. So uh, I'm telling you this story because um, one thing that I have been really conscious of in this pregnancy is getting a wide array of nutrients and eating a lot of different things, but also making sure that I'm eating enough carbohydrate because I tend to be one of those people that likes to stay on the lower carb spectrum. Um, not low, low carb like keto, but lower carb in general. I tend to feel best that way. And so sometimes with, depending on my activity level and what I'm up to, sometimes I don't quite get enough carbs. Excuse me. Sometimes I don't quite get enough carbs. So I have to be cognizant, especially growing a human. I have to be very cognizant of, am I getting enough carbohydrates in, you know, to support my blood sugar and to support healthy pregnancy. So, um, this pregnancy, I have been doing a little bit of orange juice, number one, because it tastes so good. Um, which, you know, if you want to call it a pregnancy craving, cool, but I don't really crave it. It's just something that sounds nice. Um, but I will often have two swigs of some fresh squeezed orange juice, um, like when I'm starting to get really hungry as I am creating the meal that I'm about to eat. Um, but uh, what I've noticed with my tracking over the last two weeks is that 
whenever I have orange juice, even when combined with a meal, my blood sugar goes all the way up to 130. And does it come back down to baseline within an hour? Yes. So that demonstrates very good glucose and insulin control. However, it's an excursion. So it's good for me to know that orange juice, even with a meal, is going to spike my blood sugar. Um, and uh, that is really the strength of monitoring things. So I can go back in my data and see, excuse me, what meals made me go up and what meals made me have a big excursion and what meals, let me do an example, and what meals really kept me very, very stable. Here's a good example. Um, and uh, one, one thing that I recommend my patients to do is when they first get a month of sensors is to eat the same that you always have especially in the first week, don't change anything in your diet and just stay curious, log all of the data and see how your blood sugar is affecting you with all the meals and snacks that you typically eat. And then in the subsequent three weeks, then start to make changes. And you can also have periods of time where you test foods. Like you could test what happens when you eat white rice plain or white rice with butter or white rice with a fat with a protein. And notice how your glycemic control is with those changes. So um, the cost for something like this for a whole month is about $199, which might seem a little costly, but you're not paying a doctor visit to get it prescribed to you and you're getting it all integrated in an app. Also, if you use my discount code, you will get a really good chunk of change off of that price. Um, so I paid about 150, give or take, um, for my month. And honestly, I've been obsessed with this, you guys, like it tells you so much cool information. Um, and like the first like four or five days, my husband could tell you that I was just raving about how happy I was to actually be doing this and have it all integrated nicely in one place. Um, and so I totally, totally, totally think that the cost is worth it and very does make it very does make it very affordable. So, um, you know, you can start with doing a month of continued glucose monitors. You can do three months. Um, I would say for newbies, it's good to do longer so you can learn more. Um, but if you are more metabolically proficient, you know a little bit about nutrition and blood sugar, then, you know, doing a month might be all that you need. So um, I have my midwife appointment coming up this week. And because of that, uh, I will be able to show them my data that I got over the last two weeks and say to them, I clearly do not have gestational diabetes. So um, let's see, the, the cutoffs for uh, gestational diabetes, I have to read these because I always forget them, but um, you, you want a certain amount of glycemic control and you want, you need to fall within certain parameters. So like if you are before a meal, we want your blood sugar 95 or less. One at one hour after a meal, we want you to be 140 milligrams or less. Two hours after me after a meal, we want you to be you to be 120 um, or less in terms of your blood sugar. Okay, and this is all in milligrams per deciliter or deciliter, however you want to say it. Um, the two hour mark is in my opinion, and I believe that the data also supports this, uh, the two hours after a meal really tells us the most. Sorry about my dog, um, but the two hours after tells us the most. Um, and so that's why uh, the Very app will give you a, a two hour after score. Um, but uh, I passed this with flying colors, um, which I was expecting. Um, some people won't. Um, and and when that happens, you have 
diet, exercise, and lifestyle changes in order to help you. Um, the women with gestational diabetes that do not respond to diet and lifestyle changes, they are often put on medication. Um, I know that I be in a really blood sugar friendly paleo ish template style of diet, plus weightlifting, plus walking and a lot of activity for the last uh, like 10, 15 years. So I wasn't worried about my, about my glucose control, but using a CGM is a great tool for really anybody that is wanting to learn more about their blood sugar. So this is a long video with a lot of overview. If you have questions, please put them in the comments and I will get to them. And I can also talk more specifically about certain parts of the app, certain parts of the process, if you have questions on that. But I achieved my goal of proving that I don't have gestational diabetes and proving that my glucose control is good and that my diet that I have been eating for a you know, 10, 15 years has been very uh, supportive for me in terms of keeping my blood sugar stabilized, which it should always be a key uh, for whichever diet that you subscribe to. It needs to be blood sugar friendly because if it's not, your, your health is going to deteriorate on many different levels. And we can uh, talk about that at some point. Um, but that is my opinion about the CGM, uh, two weeks that I did with very stable and, um, discount code will be below. And if you have questions, get them at me and I will answer them. We can have more of a discussion and I hope this video was helpful. I'm Dr. Meg and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.